the garnet and gold of the 49ers set to receive the opening kickoff. Dave Rayner, a rookie from Michigan State, a luxury on Tony Dungy's roster. Give them a little more length than Mike Vanderjet on the kickoffs. Maurice Hicks, second year return man. His longest, as you can see, 40 yards this year. And we are underway in San Francisco on the stick. It comes down to Otis Amy on the sidelines. Amy twisting his way to the 25, and that's where San Francisco will put it in play. Smith, a very young guy, very bright, like the man who will be across the, the way on offense, Peyton Manning. He comes out throwing the short pass to the fullback, Fred Beasley, and Beasley picks up a gain of about six. The stingiest defense thus far through four games in the NFL. The Colts allowed only two touchdowns, and both of those came in the last five minutes of games that had already been decided. Barlow and Beasley behind Smith. Good handoff inside to Barlow. He's across the 35, a first down at the 36-yard line. In the grasp of Mike Doss, the safety. I know it is a long game, but how critical for the 49ers to get a first down on their very first possession. Uh, a short pass and then setting up the draw play. Barlow makes people miss. You can see right there, good move. But again, this just gives a stabilizing, calming influence to Alex Smith and this offensive unit. 46-year-old Mike Nolan, his first head coaching job. He's been a top assistant in the league, especially as a defensive coordinator. His dad, of course, was also the head coach here at San Francisco. Play action by Smith, throws into the flat, and tackled immediately as Billy Badjuma, a uh, rookie from Oklahoma State. No gain. David Thornton, again, he undersized as his bracket in June as compatriots in that linebacking core, but Tony Dungy likes men who hit hard and run fast, and almost every man at every position he would uh, describe as extremely fast. He will trade size for speed at any time, and he's right. And there is Tony Dungy, and uh, he is correct in his assessment. Speed is number one in the NFL. Senior citizen Tony Dungy, by the way. <laughs> he turned 50 last Thursday. Inside handoff goes to Barlow. He leads the 49ers 166 yards on the ground coming into this game. Alex Smith back to the huddle. He's 6'4", 210. He's actually an inch and a half taller than he should be, born with an extra vertebra. He, uh, of course, was a Heisman finalist, an academic All-America Player of the Year. Peyton Manning won at Tennessee. They pick one player who stands out academically, athletically. Manning won that honor at Tennessee, and so did Smith this last year at Utah. Well, you are a fountain of information. Of course, we didn't know that until we made all players take x-rays yesterday in our game preparation. <laughs> MRI is part of our routine. That's how thorough we are. He throws long this time incomplete. A little too tall trying to hit the veteran Johnny Morton. But you can see he's got a good arm and plenty on it. Now comes the punting team for San Francisco and Andy Lee, second year kicker out of Pitt. And deep to return Troy Walters, a veteran who attended college here in the Bay Area at Stanford University. Lee averaging 43 a punt. Spins that one short. Walters comes up to collect the 22 yard line and hit at the 27 yard line. Terry Jackson on the special teams with a play. Peyton Manning and this high powered Colts offense on the field when we return. No score. Now it's the Colts' turn. Peyton Manning, five time Pro Bowler, two MVPs, his ninth season. Warm up the superlatives. Uh, the league's MVP of the last two years figures to have a big day. Starts out four wide. So that was their plan to immediately spread the San Francisco defense. They want to get a feel for what they're going to do early. And then give to Edron James. All-time Colts rusher gets two. Rushing just three and dropping eight. And uh, Peyton Manning has said nothing wrong with Edger and James gaining 120 yards a game rushing. On second and eight, first throw for Manning. Into the flat to James. 
And he's pushed out of bounds at the 35 by Jeff Ulbrich. Manning salivated when uh, he saw all the injuries to the 49ers defensively. Although a couple of men, Julian Peterson, one of their stars, able to play today. Flag down and apparently a false start against the Colts. Prior to the ball being snapped, false start on number 78, offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. And that is uncharacteristic, even on the road, of a Tony Dungy team. They don't commit a lot of penalties. That time, Tariq Glenn, the left tackle, uh, again, the, the, the position most prone for a false start when you're on the road is one of the two offensive tackles. Yeah, they've committed the third least penalties, Pittsburgh, Detroit, and Indianapolis. One, two, three. Colts only 17 penalties prior to that one. Third and long for Manning. Fires down the middle, and it is caught by Dallas Clark, the tight end, as he skids at the 45-yard line with a first down. Well, you could see what the Colts did. They went to that bunch formation. Off to the right are three different receivers. Dallas Clark working the left side of the field all by himself. And the entire 49er defense rotates to the right, a setup where Manning comes back to Dallas Clark. That was really a well-designed play by offensive coordinator Tom Moore. Clark in his third year out of Iowa, the tight end, but he plays like a wide receiver. Again into the flat to James with some room to run. And he always gets extra after that first hit. Mike Adams finally drags him down with help from Keith Lewis. A couple of safeties. Well, James is such a wonderful combination. Uh, when you look at a running back, uh, certainly speed and power are the two things you love to see at the same time, but also receiving skills. How are you out in space? And needless to say, Edger and James has proven over his seven years in this league to be a really superlative receiver. Nine yards on that catch and run. He's gained 100 plus yards in all four games to start the season. Scrimmage yards. Look at him find the hole. Still on his feet. All the way to the 20 and dragging Parrish to the 14 yard line. Boys listed at only 214 pounds, but what power? Well, we've already seen so far on this first drive everything that Edger and James can do. Again, the stretch play, but look at the blocking up front. And then he sees the seam to the backside, and then it's just a combination of missed tackles and over pursuit by this 49er defense, which, by the way, is last in the league in just about every meaningful statistic. 33 yards on the run for James. That's his longest by far. The throw underneath is complete. As we look here for a possible touchdown throw to Marvin Harrison, he hasn't caught one until that. Short gainer into the six-yard line. It'll be second and two. You can see that the Colts have been inside the opponents 20, 10 different times. They've come up with four touchdowns and five field goals. And Marvin, when he split out there to the right, is, is limping. He's favoring one of his legs. He's on the far right side oh, to give inside that. to Dominique Rhodes. In for James. He's got the touchdown. But Harrison, I think of even more importance, the Marvin Harrison is really having trouble moving. He was a decoy only on that play, needless to say, as they ran it into the end zone. This was the play prior to the touchdown. There's Marvin in the slot, just running a simple curl pattern, caught the ball. Now, you know, obviously, whatever happened to him was a result of a hit. Andrew Chat to try the extra point. 7 0 Colts, a very efficient 72 yard drive in seven plays. Dominic Rhodes backing up Edgerin James gets the call, and he has his first rushing touchdown of the year. How smooth was that scoring drive by the Colts? Edgar and James a part of it all. Seven plays, 72 yards. James, 33-yard run, the biggest. And Dominic Rhodes uh, gets the frosting with a touchdown run of six yards. Rayner kicks it off with a 7-0 lead. And uh, the former Sacramento State Hornet star, Otis Amy, brings it back across to 25. And uh, buried at the 27-yard line. 
Seven thirty five left opening quarter. It's game time baby. Are you ready? And it's here on CBS. Harrison seems to be moving uh, with some fluid uh, action there. Perhaps just a little nick we'll see in the next possession for the Colts. 7 nothing. the deficit staring at young Alex Smith as he sets his line at the Niner 27 yard line. Here comes the blitz and Smith he figured to get plenty of that able to shovel it ahead to Kevin Barlow as David Thornton came in on the blind side blitz for the Colts. Well there's no mercy in the National Football League a rookie getting his first start at the very top of your screen totally and you can see Alex Smith to his credit sees David Thornton at the very last minute coming from his blind side and a good job of dumping off the ball but you know the Colts are going to come at him from every angle every conceivable blitz and probably one or two that he hasn't seen before that's the way of life for a rookie gained a half a yard so no sack for David Thornton. Back to Barlow. Plows his way out to the 33 yard line. This offensive line of the 49ers believe that they can run the ball on this Colts defense. It's one of the smaller defensive lines in the NFL. Yeah they had a big upgrade when they got Corey Simon. But if the 49ers are going to be able to hang in this game at all. They're going to have to somehow pound out some first downs and some yardage on the ground. Smith from the shotgun. He's familiar with that at Utah. That's what they use. A good throw on a first down to Johnny Morton. Former Southern California star was played at Detroit, Kansas City, and now San Francisco. Well, this was a dart from Alex Smith. Take a look at this thing. That's not a lob, folks. That is perfectly to the outside shoulder and right on the hands of Johnny Morton, who runs a simple deep out. Take a look at this. Work Nick Harper and that is just almost impossible to defend when the route is run that well and the ball is thrown like that. As you can see on stat tracks first catch for Morton 13 yards on the play. From the 45 back to Barlow. Runs into a crowd breaks out of there. 50. Tip toes out of bounds just shy of the 45. It's close to a first down. Well this is nice work by Kevin Barlow because his initial hole as you can see is off left guard. There's nothing there at all. And David Thornton number 50 over pursues the play. He loses contained to that side and Kevin Barlow is able to tap dance to the outside. And again again they move the chains. Uh, you know they're down to second and very very short but they're keeping Peyton Manning over on the bench. This is a nice start now for this 49er offense. Wide receivers to the left and tight end Steve Bush to the right on second and short. And that's a short gain as Monte Rager nails Kevin Barlow. Joining us down on the field and what a beautiful turf it is. I'm in Katayan. Well thank you Dick. Well some good news for Colts fans on Marvin Harrison. I'm told he's fine on the bench though. As we know from talking to Marvin last night he probably wouldn't have told him that he's hurting if he was hurting Dick. Back <laughs> to you. That's right. That left wrist you can't quite see it in that shot. But he wears a heavy bandage. So that's what he has a cast actually. And he refuses to let the trainers and doctors look at it. He doesn't want an x-ray. I want to play is his attitude. Third and inches and Barlow gets the first down and more to the 37 of the Colts. Josh Thomas the tackler. A uh, good job up front that time by the 49ers offensive line. Running behind Quame Harris the right tackle Eric Heitman the right guard. You can see there comes a good block by Harris as he pulls and kicks to the outside. Newberry's in on the play. Good work. Good work that time by this group up front and let's face it they're under intense pressure knowing that their defense ranked last in the league this explosive Colts offense every play they keep the ball is a mini victory. Smith in the shotgun with Frank Gore into the game for the first time Smith has to throw that one away and uh, no flag down although Smith tasted the green turf as Corey Simon the ex Philadelphia Eagle who has really added some bulk to the center of the Indianapolis defensive line. What a pickup he was Dan. Well, Tony Dungy couldn't believe it. Corey Simon in a contract dispute with the Eagles uh, all of a sudden comes on the market and Tony Dungy said I couldn't believe it. I couldn't even think about it but he credits Simon for actually making it all happen because he wanted to come 
to the Colts. He wanted to play for Dungy, and he uh, knew he had a chance. He came from a team with Super Bowl aspirations. He wanted to join another. Frank Gore, the running back, along with uh, Barlow. The throw underneath, incomplete, and almost an interception for Jason David. He got his hands in front of Arnaz Battle. Battle, who has uh, had to sit it out with a knee, able to come back for duty today for San Francisco. Well, you take a look at the at the pattern being run there by Battle, but the reality. <laughs> He's getting a little mugged, but the reason that ball came in was right here. The pocket just disintegrates on Alex Smith. You can see right there, Larry Triplett was one of the guys in there, but he couldn't step into that. He had to throw that thing falling backwards. So third down and 10 as the 49ers drive stalling here at the 36-yard line. Again, Smith from the shotgun. And a full start. Of course, Dick, the one thing about Alex Smith and the shotgun, it's not something he Prior had to, to get snap. used to in Full San Francisco. Offense. That was Five his offense. Penalty, still third down. That was his offense at the University of Utah in that shotgun, so that's where he is the most comfortable. Lost only one game in his two years running the Utes offense. He's from San Diego, California, Helix High School, down to the south. He wore number seven in high school. The honor is uh, hero John Elway. That wasn't available here. So 11 his selection. Third and 15. Knocked away by David and a flag down at the line of scrimmage. No flag against David who's been very aggressive in his coverage. Brandon Lloyd the intended receiver. Lloyd felt he was pushed. Let's see the call. Holding offense number 67. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Anthony Clement is playing left tackle and he's trying to keep uh, Dwight Freeney off the back of the young quarterback. <laughs> well Jonas Jennings is normally the left tackle for the 49ers but he's having to miss another game because of a bad shoulder and you're right Anthony Clement a uh, <laughs> it, it's a tough assignment to strap on Dwight Freeney. This guy has become the most active defensive lineman in football. How do you spell unenviable? A run by Lee. Down nicely, just shy of the goal line by Otis Amy, who's usually on the receiving end when the 49ers are being kicked to. Time up. From the four yard line. Harrison's in there. Etcher and James caught in the backfield. Powers his way near the line of scrimmage. A loss of one as Tony Parrish from safety and linebacker Derek Smith collaborate on the stop. Well, the San Francisco defense on this possession has the field position on their side, but take a look at some of the problems facing the 49ers. Look at that top. Their opponents have run 115 more plays in only four games, and they're losing every one of those other statistical battles by huge margins. A loss of one, second and 11. Take to James. Manning, wide open Reggie Wayne. Wayne circles back at the 20 and a first down at the 24. Wayne, who has 15 catches coming in and a touchdown. Well, Reggie Wayne, who has grown into such a complete receiver on the other side from Marvin Harrison, take a look at this stem pattern. He runs right. Look, at he sells the deep. He sells the deep to Shante Spencer. And then when he breaks off his pattern, Spencer not able to react. It is, uh, it is a secondary to say they're depleted would be a gross understatement. You saw in stat tracks Manning five for five to open the game. That pass good for 21 yards. Goes long for Wayne. Almost intercepted. It was caught by Mike Adams, but he was out of bounds. Adams streaking from a safety spot to help out on the corner. Almost picked it off. And that was uh, kind of an uncharacteristic throw from Peyton because it's really into double coverage. The ball floats on him a little bit, giving Adams all sorts of time to react to that football. On the far side of the field, this is what was happening. Marvin Harrison. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and I think we can put the rest to anything being wrong with his leg. Uh, he looked just fine there. 
Edron James on second and ten. A huge hole. Finally wrapped up at the 40 after a gain of 16. Mike Adams, the tackler. Again, keep in mind that San Francisco only dressed six defensive backs. Two of these guys were on the practice squad within the last couple of weeks. And if uh, Edger and James gets into the secondary, I'm sorry, but the only guy back there who really has much in the way of playing experience is Tony Parrish. And one guy, it's kind of hard for one guy to do it all. Dominique Rhodes replaces James at the 39 first down Manning. Peyton loves this routine. Pointing, shouting, stomping. So brilliant. And then he guns a first down pass to Reggie Wayne. That'll go to the 47 yard line of the 49ers. You just have to have sympathy for Mike Nolan when you put a team on the field that has lost so many outstanding players. Look at the cornerbacks. Ahmed Plummer with an ankle. He won't play for a while. Derek Johnson played last week injured. Doesn't play today. Willie Middlebrooks played last week against Arizona. He's out. Julian Peterson does come back today. Mike Rumpf is out for the season with a planter of fashion. So they've got three, four cornerbacks on that injured picture list there. They are really down deep. Edwin James. He is so tough to tackle. And it just isn't this uh, 49er defense limited by injuries. It's everyone trying to stop number 32. Well, this is a uh, uh, this is an outmatched defense against obviously a well-oiled machine when you're describing an offense. And, and as you can see, Edron James off to a fabulous start already here, only in the first quarter as we wind it down. This is not much of a surprise, though, the way the Colts are moving the ball. Jeff Saturday told us sometimes he listens to Peyton Manning and thinks to himself, what the heck is he talking about? <laughs> it's to James again, and he has a first down inside the 35-yard line before Jeff Ulbrich and Travis Hall can make the stop. And that's the end of the opening quarter here in San Francisco. Colts by seven. Welcome to the second quarter. Dick Enver, Dan Deardorff, Armin Katayan. The Colts with a 7 0 lead and on the march at the 34 yard line. First down. Long fake handoff. Throw over the middle, complete to Dallas Clark. And he's down to the 16 yard line and another Colts first down. You know, Manning was almost apologetic as you see this throw again, Dan, about the uh, fantasy players. He said, I'm sorry out there, you drafted me, but we got to do what we have to do. Well, so many options, and, and they all catch the ball. How often do you see a Colts receiver have a catchable ball and they mishandle it? You know, very, very rarely. Uh, Peyton Manning has an embarrassment of riches. And he said that this is one of the things they have to do. Edgerin James is going to run more and more as long as those defenses play it soft. As many have three rushers, eight pass defenders. Well, well the Indianapolis Colts now move uh, inside. The red zone of the 49ers uh, you can see for today uh, they're one for one with a touchdown but uh, uh, this Colts offense a frequent visitor to everybody's red zone. They bunch three receivers to the right side. Of course that's the uh, Marvin Harrison side. He's always on the right. He fires short of the goal line to Harrison and that'll be. Close to a and will be another first down. Well, we saw the last time that they ran this bunch formation. They came back to the opposite side of the field to Dallas Clark. This time with Harrison, Wayne, and Stokely, you can see that that causes a lot of confusion in a secondary. And even with that so, bad wrist, isn't it amazing those sweet hands of Harrison? Well, the one thing about the cast is it keeps his wrist from going back, but it's not on his palm. That's the good news, so he can have a feel for the ball. This is a power formation here. With Edger and James at tailback. James pushes his way to the one yard line. Did he fumble the ball? There's a scramble. They haven't marked it down yet. 49ers say they have it. Would well, that no be a one, turnabout? No one in a striped shirt has said that yet. Now, now they mark it. In the end zone, touchback, San Francisco. 
Mike Adams came up with a ball. What a turnabout as Manning and the Colts on the doorstep fumble into the end zone and the 49ers stay within seven. You saw Tony Dungy tuck the red flag back in his pocket. I'm, he had it out. I'm really surprised that he doesn't want to challenge this because I think it's really, really close as to whether Edger and James got that ball across the goal line. Take a look at this, folks. He's going to have the ball in his right hand. Now watch as he reaches out right here. Is that ball in his right. control when it breaks so. the plane? Well, it's you know, Dick, if it breaks the plane before it comes loose, it's a touchdown. So where you know, right here, when he still got it, and then it comes out. It is extremely close. It has been challenged by Dunchy. Yep. They'll review and will return. Welcome back to San Francisco, everybody. Right here inside this circle is the right hand of Edger and James holding the football. You see it? It's across the goal line, and he still has control of that football before he loses it. The play stops the second that ball breaks the plane. I think that's a Colts touchdown, and I think this will be a successful Tony Dungy challenge. There's a case where you do get yeah. a different angle. I have to agree. At first, I thought he didn't have control when the ball hit yeah. the goal line, but he obviously still has a solid grip on it. Now keep in mind it was ruled on the field as a touchback and a fumble so it has to be conclusive evidence but I thought that was conclusive. He had control of the football it wasn't leaving his hand until he rotated his hand and the ball fell out of the bottom but by that point in time I believe it had already crossed the plane for a Colts touchdown. They have not lost a fumble all season the Colts they've done everything so incredibly well 4-0. How about this time? Larry After Nimmers. reviewing the play, the runner was on top of players when he tried to stretch the ball out. The ball came loose before it penetrated the goal line. Therefore, the ruling on the field I totally stands. disagree with It that. is a touchdown. I, I'm sorry. It is. Oops. It is a touchback. <laughs> yeah. I, Indianapolis will be charged with their first team timeout. Well, Larry Nemers has the only opinion that counts. I thought that Edger and James still had control of the football. Again, let's look at it one more time. Right there, it's a touchdown. But it, the ball does come out, but I think when he first breaks the plane, which is right, I, my opinion. The only, yeah, I the think only reasoning may be they felt that the ball was coming out there, but indeed he had penetrated the goal line. So the 49ers, huge play. Trailing 7 0. Take over at their own 20 and out to the 24. Kevin Barlow, the five year runner from the University of Pittsburgh, into the arms of Larry Triplett. Barlow, interestingly, Dan, uh, in his off days, will often go out to San Quentin Prison and talk to the inmates there about football. He's giving back in an unusual place. Well, big fans, too. Good for him. Down. He had some running room to the outside. Mike Doss up from safety to make the tackle. 26 points there. It's all they've allowed the Colts in the first four weeks. Week one, Baltimore gets seven. Next week, the Jaguars. They score a field goal, period. How about Cleveland? Two field goals in week three. And then last week, the Titans had scored only three until the final five minutes, and then a touchdown at the very end of the game Ron Meeks uh, the defensive coordinator that's been the big surprise for Indianapolis they we know about their offense but suddenly that defense has been uh, omnipotent as it is right there denying the first down as a flag goes down Barlow cannot beat the surge of those white jersey defenders. Check the penalty. Clearly didn't make the 30, but and this team so rarely that five yards will result in the first down. Rarely penalized, but there's a critical 
flag that will give the first down to San Francisco on the face mask. Five yard version. Appeared to be Monte Rager that was whistled on the play. Frank Gore, the rookie from Miami, number 21. He's explosive. They think uh, he's got a terrific future. And the whistle before the snap. False start against the Niners. You know, we showed Full Ron start, Meeks. Offense, number 44. Five yard penalty, still first down. We showed Ron Meeks over there on the Colts sideline a couple plays ago, Dick. And, you know, again, like all things Indianapolis, there's continuity. This is now his fourth year as defensive coordinator and he and Tony and Bill Polian have systematically just gotten the type of player that they want. Tony had his scheme Meeks a proponent of it and it was just getting the players that bet the best fit into those slots in that scheme and you know they are finally getting there and as Tony said it's really simple why they've improved so much on the field. It's personnel. It's the same blueprint he's used on offense keeping the coordinator. Howard Mudd, for, uh, the offensive line coach, eight years along with Tom Moore. This is Gore, built a lot like uh, former Miami star Clinton Portis. Doss in June with a tackle. There's Howard Mudd. You 49er fans watching remember his great days in the offensive line, uh, blocking for John Brody and company. He was a uh, all pro several years out of Hillsdale College in Michigan. You think uh, today's alumni day here for the 49ers? You think they? Uh, you he think got they did it. He got because it. they knew Howard was coming to town. He got an invitation, and so did another man over there on the cold sideline. Tony Dungy was a 49er one year in 1979. Snap, and here's Snack. who's a good runner, but he's going to run through Robert Mathis. Mathis, like Freeney, undersized defensive end who is a powerful rusher. Nice play. Well, that's one of the reasons that Mike Nolan made the switch to Alex Smith was because of his legs. He's a guy that can make a play running. This designed all the way. Unfortunately, too many guys, <laughs> too many guys chose to run right by Brock. You can't, uh, you can't let that defensive end come upfield without chopping him down. Somebody's got to take him on, not the quarterback. So the loss on the play brings up third down and 16. Smith as Mathis has his fifth sack of the year. He now what? takes the lead from Dwight Freeney. Dick, what a beautiful spin move by Robert Mathis. What a beautiful spin move to the inside. Take a look. He's all the way to the left of your screen. Whoa, he does a 360 and just freezes Harris. Oh, that is a classy move. You make contact with the offensive tackle, you get him to lean forward, and then you do that spin to the inside, and he came away clean. Andy Lee to punt it. Troy Walters up to the 43. And a flag down, and so is Walters at midfield. Terry Jackson, one of the special team stars for the 49ers, made the stop, but uh, check the call. It's again San Francisco. So the 49ers offensive line now has allowed a quarterback sack in 24 straight games. Now you compare that with Indianapolis. Manning has not been sacked all year. No. That's four games uh, without a sack and in this day and age in the NFL that's some accomplishment. Still no official word on the penalty. They did point at uh, San Francisco or the Colts rather we have holding return. during the return on the return team number 38 that penalty is declined during the kick we had holding on the return team number 38 also that penalty will be assessed from the end of the kick 10 yards Jerome Sapp saying well you're picking on me <laughs> <laughs> but you got to pick one of the two Staff who played at Notre Dame. Let me get this right. They called him for holding twice. No, they called somebody else for holding. Oh. <laughs> but they picked his holding call. You know <laughs> what did I do? Why me? That's right. Landmark Golden Gate Bridge. How beautiful is that? One of the great cities of the world. Welcome back to the stick. 
San Francisco and Indianapolis. The Colts with a 7 0 lead. Manning sets him up at the 34. Fake to James. Throws long to the sideline and a diving grab by Wayne. A tough catch. Now ruled incomplete. He came back, but the ball was a little short. Big Sunday night of programming here on CBS. Stay tuned after the football action. James, second and ten. Battles his way up the middle for hard-earned yardage. Jeff Ulbrich makes the tackle. We go down to Armin. Well, you know, Dick, if the 49ers secondary being banged up wasn't enough, really the NFC since 2003 has really been Peyton's place. You look at his stats, 33 touchdowns against three interceptions and a quarterback rating of 137. He says, I prepare a bit more because I'm unfamiliar with the schemes and the personnel. And, man, does it show up in the record. Seven wins and only one loss against the NFC since 2003, Dick. Uh, he really has picked on his uh, NFC cousins, and that's Jeff Ulbrich, who started off the field and holding his arm in pain, now assisted to the sidelines early in the second, 7-0 Indianapolis. Look at the TD interception rate, 33-3 and for Manning on the crossover games against the NFC. It's third down and six for Manning in the shotgun. Throws short, incomplete for Reggie Wayne. Well covered, double covered in fact. And Sean Tay Spencer was closest to the ball. And uh, the 49er fans, a rare chance to cheer the defense holding the Colts. Well, they really forced Peyton Manning in to get him near the football. His protection broke down and the blitz came clean. So they give the 49ers credit, outmanned, outgunned. They're still trying to play the game the right way. Not just sitting back and just playing a deep zone and saying you can't get us that way. They're playing aggressive football. Hunter the punter, Hunter Smith to Otis Amy. Amy lets it uh, bound dead at the 17 yard line. Covered by Dexter Reed. Smith. Dumps it in the flat to the 20, a short gain to Chris Hetherington. Ten-year player out of Yale, a rare chance for him to catch the ball his second of the season. Well, it's a long and illustrious list of QBs that have uh, played here for the 49ers. How about this guy, Y.A. Tittle, played here from 1951 to 1960. And then this guy, well, he only won five Super Bowls. And then Steve Young. An apprentice, a backup, and then when he got his turn, he won a Super Bowl and took it all the way to Canton in the Hall of Fame. That is a great list, isn't it? Yes, I would say so. Barlow wrapped up after a short game. In fact, Tony Dungy said when he was traded here, Bill Walsh's first year in 79, and they happened to have a fairly good draft that year. Montana and Clark came in with Dungy. Well, did ever a quarterback in the... NFL Hall of Fame spend more time as a backup than Steve Young. You know, stop and yeah. what, you know I mentioned earlier about Peyton Manning having an embarrassment of riches. How about the quarterback position here where you have a Hall of Famer backing up a Hall of Famer when it was Young behind Montana. Alex Smith uh, uh, it's quite a legacy here that he has to try to grow into. There's a lot to like about this young guy and we'll get into that as Smith third and long throws right into the yard. Of Cato June and June, the linebacker from Michigan, has a Colts touchdown. And he has two interceptions this year, and both of them have gone for scores. Well, the reason that Cato June is playing outside linebacker for Tony Dungy and the Colts is the fact that he's got great range and great speed. And obviously he surprises Alex Smith by getting out there and getting underneath underneath the play. You can see that June was lined up against the slot receiver. I mean, that's normally a position who's, uh, you know, really a position occupied by a defensive back. He's lined up across from Otis Amy and totally makes a play that you expect a corner to make, not an LB. That's Bander jab with the extra point. June was a strong safety and a nickel linebacker at Michigan. Well, Dick, now for the first time in his NFL career, Alex Smith is going to face some real adversity. He throws a pick, gets run back for a touchdown, down 14 to nothing, and now he's got to go back out and lead his offense. And this is where you look, this is where you look for signs of composure, poise, leadership. 
it's a, a growing process that every successful quarterback, well, and every unsuccessful one, too, has had to go through in this league. Kick coming down on the sidelines to Maurice Hicks. He bolts his way across the 25 yard line. Well, the Colts have not allowed a touchdown in the first half this year, and the defense has scored a touchdown thanks to Cato June's play to give them a 14 0 lead here today. 6.23 left in the half. Well, when you look back through the years, the number one picks, Jim Plunkett, even the uh, Peyton Manning's daddy, Archie Manning, and Peyton himself, and John Elway. I mean, they all started. Troy, they Troy played Aikman. early. Troy, it, they played early, but they couldn't play the way we remember them now. They had, didn't have the kind of uh, supporting cast that after they grow into the position. Joe oh, Smith in that predicament now throws underneath incomplete to Frank Gore. And that was just a rushed pass by Smith where he threw it down at his knees. And this is what Alex Smith has been going through. Very first play of the game, he gets a completion to get things started. And a good throw on an out pattern to the sideline. Now he's had to run for his life a couple of times. He goes down, but then this play, this looked like he made up his mind that he was going to throw the ball over there without first looking at the coverage. And that's that's something you just cannot get away with in the NFL. You have to make the decision as you go. You can't make a pre-snap decision and live with it. Now Peyton Manning can identify it. He threw a interception for a touchdown his first game. Here's Gore on a little screen. Gets to the 32-yard line, but that won't be enough for him. No, what am I? What an effort by Gore. And this is why Coach Mike Nolan said to us yesterday, he's explosive. He's going to be very good in this league. Well, he shows some power. This is a fact. He takes a couple big shots from the Indianapolis defense. Mike Doss and Bob Sanders are both going to get good pops on him. Now, there's he just goes over Doss. Sanders drives him back a couple yards, but Frank Gore doesn't quit, keeps the legs pounding, and moves the sticks. Now, that gets this crowd a little bit fired up as well it should. He's only 5'9", but 212. 14 yards on the effort by Gore and a first down at the 40. Back to Gore. Tries to wiggle out of the tackle of Mike Doss. Well, let's go back to 1998. Manning is in his first career start as the number one pick. Archie and brother Eli in the stands facing off against, uh, there they are, <laughs> look at young Eli. <laughs> Dan Marino of the Dolphins, the opposition. Manning sacked four times. Threw three interceptions, one return for a touchdown. Colts lost 24 to 15. How did he turn out? Uh, Peyton Manning. Yeah. Uh, looks like he's uh, he's progressing uh, rather handsomely. Smith throws as he's hit. Goes long for Lloyd, but that'll be intercepted by Jason David. And David back at the 35 and down at the 38. Well, that's. Uh, that's a throw that Alex Smith really wanted to make, but he couldn't step into it. It's hard to throw the ball deep when you have a white helmet right in your chest, and that was a situation here. Play action, freezes for a minute, but then two Colts right on top of Alex Smith. He's not able to throw with Rager and Triplett right in front of him, and he throws a floater that's really just an easy. Look at the pressure. If you can't get into it, don't throw it. You can't throw the ball 40 yards. When you're going backwards. He uh, unfortunately for 49er fans he did have his uh, long ball threat Brandon Lloyd open he was a uh, five yards beyond David but uh, the ball hung up and an easy pick for David. Manning screen Edger and James 45. Straight on 50 hit from behind first down at the 49 yard line of the San Francisco 49ers. Ooh, Andre I, Carter. I love how patient Edger and James is. He is in no hurry when he gets out in the open field and he is a lineman and a wide receiver's best friend because he gives everybody an opportunity to set up their blocks. You never see him. You never see him make a cut too early. Starts his career as the NFL rushing leader his first two seasons then has that terrible knee injury that cost him the entire 2001 year but he is fully back. All batteries charged. 
and uh, he'll be a free agent at the end of the season. He's the Colts franchise player having to play this year I think for something uh, a little bit north of eight million dollars and uh, a lot of talent in that number thirty two. Taking his time on second and eight. Fake to James. Down he goes. The first sack allowed by the Colts this year. Andre Carter, the 6'4, 250 pound outside linebacker from California. Well, he just crashes a corner, and Peyton Manning can see him coming. You can see that Jake Scott, the right guard, pulls out, but he gives up that corner to Andre Carter, who just collapsed it. And uh, Howard Mudd, yeah, that's uh, boys. We'll be going over that a few times this week in the film. But first sack of the season against the Colts. Colts have uh, racked up 15 sacks in the first four games, not allowed a single one until that play by Carter. Third down and a bunch. 18. Manning fires. Oh, and good. And no, did he have it or not? No signal. Yes. Now they come in incomplete. Brandon Stokely hit as he caught the ball didn't quite establish possession as he was drilled by the deep secondary. Well a couple of years ago this would have been a completion in the NFL but not now when you've got to come down and demonstrate a football move you've got to take off and go someplace and Peyton Manning oh he just oh he knew he had what he wanted and as it turned out it was actually the uh, the best thing that could have happened for the Colts. It wasn't a fumble. Tony Parrish was so close to picking it off. Amy runs into his own man and then dropped at the 25 yard line. David Thornton, the tackler. Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison, our friend and colleague Leslie Visser, an interesting interview. Manning uh, saying that one of his treasured uh, keepers is a helmet signed by Jerry Rice and Marvin Harrison. I thought it was really. It was really fun to see the two of them together. And doesn't Marvin Harrison have one of the great smiles oh. in the National Football League? <laughs> Iridescent. Smith under heavy heat by this Colts defense and trailing 14 nothing. Well, I don't know if it was caused by the Colts, but there was movement on the left side. Anthony yeah, Clement. Clement made a move. Full start offense number 77. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Well, it's Kawame Harris. Well, I think Harris might have been the first one to go, but you can see right there that there was a false start as well by Clement. I think he uh, he just was the benefactor of being the second guy to false start. Harris went first. First, when you put the speed on the edges, Dwight Freeney and Robert Mathis, no team has two pass rushers where they're just sprinters coming off the line of scrimmage. There's 93. Freeney coming in from the right side, and the throw quickly by the young quarterback is out of bounds. Well, and I, that was intentional by Alex Smith. He saw Jason David closing quickly, and he threw this ball. I don't think this ball just got away from him. I think he saw the coverage, had committed to it. He just throws it away. Dwight Freeney this time pretty effectively blocked as he's run upfield and uh, out of the play. That uh, was a good piece of work by Clement that time. Freeney who describes himself as the wildflower in a field of daisies. <laughs> How did Smith? Oh, oh he, he fumbled. It. And he's able to fall on the loose ball down at the 15 yard line and that was Freeney. Who loves to get in? He said he watched Lawrence Taylor as a kid. He loved the way Taylor would get the sack and the forced fumble. Uh, here he just uses a bull rush on Clement, drives him back right into Smith, and then reaches out and, as you said, just knocks it loose. The NFL cycle spins, and these 49er fans have uh, enjoyed so many glorious years five Super Bowl titles, and uh, Required to be a bit more patient here early in 2005, and uh, it'll be interesting, Dan. Hope we're around in five years. And we say, well, you remember Alex Smith? That first game he started against Indianapolis had his problems, but look at him now. Yeah, maybe this will be one of those days that we'll file away and say, hey, you know what? We were there when when a great career got started. 
Everybody out here in the Bay Area hopes that so. Third down and 21. And just a short pass and nothing there incomplete is the call. Terry Jackson hit by Marlon Jackson not related. Marlon's the number one draft pick of the Colts out of Michigan. Well Bill Walsh uh, who knows quarterback play about as well as any coach that ever walked the sidelines. Uh, he just said simply that Smith there's just no question about it. the game is going to be so much faster than he thinks in the preseason and practice aren't the same as when game action begins. He's not the first guy to do this. It's a painful process. Lee's punt to Troy Walters fair catch at the Colts 42 yard line. It is not going to get much better when uh, the Niners are down 14 nothing and the Colts can tee off. Manning looking uh, down deep intercepted. It's Derek Smith the linebacker who had drifted back deep and picks it off and there's a rarity as well only the third interception thrown by Manning this year. of Alex Smith the I first came up here in 66 the Niners played at Keysar Stadium and their coach was Dick Nolan their quarterback your buddy John you've, Brody you've come full circle <laughs> haven't you really and the, here we are the surprise to me Dick so far in this game is the San Francisco defense they've only given up seven points remember the other it was a it was a defensive score so they, they've played this Colts offense much better much better than I think anyone anticipated and now with the interception by Derek Smith an opportunity for Alex Smith as he takes over at the Colts 47 yard line. Final two minutes of the opening half trailing 14 nothing. Fires incomplete. Barlow drops it. Fans booing but uh, you know everyone's trying to do maybe a little too much for the young quarterback. Well after play action Peyton Manning is trying to throw the ball to Brandon Stokely but somehow he just did not see Derek Smith underneath. And at first I thought maybe it was a question that he thought Stokely was going to run another pattern. But when he came off the field he never went over to Stokely. They didn't get together and talk about it. Uh, that indicates to me that was just an error on Peyton. They're both inside to Frank Gore and Gore does he get to top speed in a hurry drives to the 39 an eight yard pickup. It's going to be a interesting change of pace runner for these 49ers with Barlow at 234 more of the power back and then Gore who uh, carries 215 pounds but lightning quick can give them the spurt and if they can just get to the point Dick where they're an effective rushing team what a big deal that'll be for Alex Smith I mean to have a ground game always the QB's best friend but desperately needed here that's Gore in motion and Smith rolling being chased and then throws into triple coverage. Does it count? Yes. Mike Doss has the interception. Oh, they're talking about it. it we're, we're, we're talking about both feet and we're talking about possession. They confer and agree. Did you see how fast yeah. Robert Mathis was chasing Alex Smith? Again, Smith had to hurry this throw. He's rolling out. It's a design rollout to his left. Now, Mike Doss. First of all, we'll start with the feet. They're down. Does he have possession? Well, that angle right there doesn't tell us if the ball was secured. This one will. Yeah, looks like he's able to clutch it. He's got the football. Look at <laughs> Mathis. The hungry tiger. Now again, we're inside. We're inside two minutes. Peyton. <laughs> Peyton was doing his best to try to get a snap off before the official upstairs can take a look at it. This isn't uh, a challenge situation by one of the teams. The the replay official upstairs. Mike Doss does bobble the ball a little bit. Where does his elbow land? Looks to me like his elbow landed inside the field of play. Does I he, think uh, does he get both feet down or just one. 
can't see. From well, that. once the elbow comes down right there, there Dick, everything's yeah, done. I not, think the yeah. question is going to be whether he bobbles the ball right there and loses possession. You know, you can. I think right there, the, I think the replay official may be looking at that and saying, you know what? Even we'll though review the, the play to see if the receiver had control and both feet inbounds before the interception. You know, even though the ball doesn't touch the ground, don't be confused by that. If the replay official feels that he didn't have complete possession of that football when he hits the ground, they can easily overturn that, and I think there's a good chance that they will. But I'm 0 for 1 on replays so far uh, in this game. Doesn't mean you're wrong. No, no, I don't think it does. The ball, by the strictest standards, when Mike Doss hits the ground here, I don't think there's any question he's in the field to play. But he must hold on to the ball and have complete control of the ball. And that little squirt of the ball right there as it moves down, hits his thigh, and that's how he maintains control. That may cost him the interception. Well, that is confusing, isn't it? Because he obviously, I mean, he gets it back. And yeah, I know if it, that were in the field of play, obviously it would be a catch. Yes. It's different coming out of bounds. It's different when you land out of bounds. You must have complete control of the football. You see Mike Nolan uh, contemplating the upcoming decision. He grew up, you know, following his dad, Dick, and coaching and had his favorites. Alex Smith there as well. Larry Nemers really giving this a good hard look again the ruling on the field was an interception so again, he's faced with looking at uh, evidence that very conclusively allows him to overturn it members wisely uh, when he's not officiating is a motivational speaker would there be a better profession to get material than being a <laughs> near a huddle making tough calls hearing crowd react he must be very good Let's take uh, one more look at Mike Doss and his attempt here. The ball just floats on Alex Smith. I think he's clearly in the field of play. I think we're talking about possession. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands, interception, first down, Indianapolis. So the juggle of the ball was not enough in Larry Nemmer's mind to overturn the call on the field. And uh, I think we'd all agree in looking at that 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 was a 50 50 proposition. And Alex Smith, meanwhile, boy, just being harassed by the speed of that front four of the Colts. They, they start at the 15 with a 64 seconds left in the half. And Reggie Wayne picks up a first down with a quick catch and ducks out of bounds outside the 25 yard line in front of Sean Tay Spencer, the 49er corner. Again, for those of you joining us here, part of the intrigue of the game was could Manning and Harrison hook up today on the field made famous in part by the great success of Steve Young and Jerry Rice, Montana and Rice, who Young and Rice with 85 touchdown catches, most ever, but now it's 85 also for Manning and Harrison coming into this game. Brandon Stokely's first catch, but a flag is down in the process. And they're pointing against the Colts. You look at those 14 points for the Colts. Cato June ran a ran an interception back into the end zone for a touchdown, and I think a lot of people are surprised, thinking that this might be a three and four touchdown first half for the Colts against this extremely beat up 49ers defense. 53 seconds left in the half. Dominique Rhodes now in for James. Take the Rhodes. Manning throws the Rhodes. He is hammered at the 24 by Marcus Douglas, the defensive end. Clock running. Of course, Manning with that hurry up offense, or at least the ability, because he so often in that position, even when he's not hurrying up, he just wants to get the defense to commit and uh, not happy at all here as another flag goes really down. Really ragged by the Colts. This is going to be another procedure call against Indianapolis, and this is so uncharacteristic. Good job, defense. 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 Down to 29 seconds for Tony Dungy's Colts. False start offense, number 78. 
Inside of one minute, when the offense is in a hurry up and there's a false start, we'll run 10 seconds off the clock. Please set the game clock to 19. Mike Vanderjat, and there's the target line for what would be a 50, 54 yard uh, field goal. His uh, yes. longest ever is 54. This year, uh, he's hit one yeah. from 41, but uh, with 19 seconds now, we'll see how serious Manning is about trying anything deep. Well, he needs a 40 yarder. <laughs> he needs a 40 yard play to get Vanderjat even, even close. Manning isn't even going to run a play. No. So the final seconds tick away. Colts offense earns one touchdown on the opening drive of the ball game as they went 72 yards and seven plays with road scoring. And then Cato Jones 24 yard interception return for a touchdown accounts for the defense's contribution to the 14 nothing halftime lead. Let's go down to Armin. Tony, rough half offensively, but your defense made some big plays and has turned up the heat on that young quarterback. Yeah, our defense is playing well. Uh, offensively, just too sloppy. And uh, fumbles, interceptions, penalties, we got to play much better the second half. All right, Coach, thank you. Dick? Well, that wouldn't be good news for San Francisco, would it? Much better. They lead 14 nothing at the half. And we'll return with a sprint halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Ready for the second half. Colts trying to go 5 and 0, oh, but their offense certainly was not uh, characteristic of their normal play. Now, uh, sloppy was the word Tony Dungy used, and and uh, he, I'm sure he read him the, the real riot act at halftime because it just, it's not the type of football a favorite should play. On the other hand, Dick, I got to give a lot of credit to the 49ers. They're competing. They're playing very hard. Yes, they've had poor play from the quarterback position with three interceptions, but the guys are really playing hard. I admire that. Couple of interceptions of Peyton Manning. And but for a Cato Chun 24 yard interception return for a touchdown, this would be a 7 0 game. Dominique Rhodes is deep. Joe Nedney finally gets in the end. They try the onside kick. And does it uh, throw, go the full 10 yards? Yes. Covered at the 41. Well, when you're stripped of all your lot of your players especially defensively you go for plays like this and Terry Jackson falls on the onside kick uh, that kudos to the 49ers what do they have to lose totally outgunned by that but that is a perfectly executed kick you can see that it leaps so high up in the air that it stays in the air long enough for the 49ers to cover the 10 yards and create a little havoc down there so that the ball bounces around. And I'll guarantee you right now, Tony Dungy's blood pressure is off the charts. And that's hard to do <laughs> with Dungy. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'll bet you he's smoking right now. And Nedney, uh, boy, the way he went into the ball so aggressively, he really disguised the onside kick about as well as one can. From the 41, it's Barlow, and he doesn't get to the line of scrimmage as Corey Simon takes him down. Let's go down to Gar Armin. Thank you, Dick. Well, I'm talking to Mike Nolan, the head coach of the 49ers. He said that Alex Smith obviously got a lot more heat in the first half than he expected. He said our offense is out of sync. Kind of a low understatement there. But he said Alex is the kind of guy who's not going to get rattled. He's going to stay calm. I said, did you tell him anything at halftime? He said, no, he's just got to go through this, Dick. Back to you. Yeah, that's the sad realism of uh, being cast into this role as a youngster who just has to learn on the job. Peyton Manning can empathize as well as anyone. Barlow plows to the 44 where it'll be third and seven. Well how about a fantasy update out there for all of you keeping track of your favorite players and uh, uh, you can see that it has not been a stellar day for either quarterback so far. Alex Smith well below 50 percent no touchdowns. Edger and James though off to a good start seven and a half yards per carry. Kevin Barlow running hard and uh, well it's no surprise to see Wayne and Harrison uh, busy over there but again pretty unproductive by the Indianapolis offense so far Smith from the shotgun on third and seven he runs to the 50 stretches to the 49 and the grasp of Cato June was it enough 
this is an element that Nolan wanted from this quarterback and expects he'll get some of these runs. Well it, it's not that Tim Rattay did such a horrible job but there aren't many playmakers on this San Francisco offense to say the least and and Alex Smith because of his athleticism is a playmaker. See that's the type of play that Tim Rattay not capable of moving. He's not very mobile. Just to remind you that Smith in two years at Utah rushed for over a thousand yards and 15 touchdowns. He's just short. And when you're down 14 nothing do you take a chance there is Tim Rattay. Who has been you know. A good uh, quarterback good enough to. Uh, offer some uh, positive things but you know you look to the future and Nolan feels that. He needs uh, the big play and Alex Smith has. More talent to deliver that in part with his legs. Let's see what happens here on fourth and about a half yard. So well, most coaches in the league would not make this call at this stage of a ball game. They go with Gore, not Barlow, at running back, and that's the fullback Beasley in motion. Gore turns forward and has the first down. Now well, that's I, that's I think Mike Nolan desperately trying to instill a little confidence in his football team. You know in the huddle when a coach makes a call like that he's telling all 11 guys out there I have faith in you. I have confidence in you to pull this off. You know something Dick that is really appreciated. It's felt by the guys out there. Well, you've been in there with you. You well, guys would campaign every you know, play on fourth and one wouldn't you. You know they talk about taking ownership of it. Well that's all those 11 guys took ownership of it right there and got a first down. That's Morton the veteran in motion the pump fake and then the throw underneath to the tight end and it is Steve Bush with his third catch of the season nine year veteran out of Arizona State and another first down. It's uh, pretty amazing that uh, in this San Francisco offense we have a Bush and a Gore. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> and that time it was the uh, the turn of Bush. The previous was Gore. It's <laughs> take your pick. I saw you at the ballot box this morning. I should have caught on. Barlow now at running back with Beasley the blocker. And it is Barlow behind Beasley breaks into the clear 25. Powers inside the 20 and the fans love that. Well this is what the 49ers before this game thought they could do and we're hopeful that they could do and that is run the ball up between the tackles against this smaller Colts defense and that was just outstanding blocking Fred Be Beasley comes in and gives Kevin Barlow a slip in there and that offensive line every one of them blocked the guy across from them that was easy pickup 20 yards for Barlow and a first down at the 18 back to Barlow nothing this time is Larry Triplett got his 295 pounds in the hole remember this drive started with the onside kick recovered by the 49ers to open the second half. Well, this is a, a defensive team that will give up some yardage. You know, they were 20th overall in terms of yardage. They were giving up 320 yards a game. But in the category that counts the most, they weren't giving up points. They came into this game the stingiest defense in the NFL. And as you can see, they're only adding to those numbers with a goose egg so far. 26 points allowed and the only yeah. two touchdowns late in the game when they already had it won did the Colts. Timeout. Lou all this week on CBS. Second and ten, a draw, and that is read perfectly by the defense. And Corey Simon is he a run stopper? Check the red zone report here. Well you can see the 49ers have only been in there six different times but hey look what they've got going for it they've scored four TDs on those six trips and the other other two times got some field goals that's two thirds of the time in the red zone that'll that'll win for it. Colts meanwhile have allowed only two TDs in eight red zone opportunities by their opposition. Tosses to Barlow with blockers in front. Barlow battles but doesn't get to the sticks he stopped. Shy of the 10. Gambled once on this drive. Will Mike Nolan do it again or 
try to get three points on the board, and that's going to be the case apparently. Yeah, you know, I think he's he's he can't he can't handle not getting any points at all out of this out of this drive. You can't you can't let that zero stay on the scoreboard any longer. His offense deserves the fact to put some points up on the board. Joe Nedney, the left-footed kicker, has tried only two field goals, as you can see in the first four games, and both short, both successful. And this one short, 30 yards. And the 49ers see a three jump up in lights. But it's the Colts in front about to get the kickoff. And San Francisco using the onside kick. They go 47 yards, but stalled outside the 10 and 30 yard field goal by Netney to make it 14 to 3. And Dick, what's really interesting, the 49ers who uh, are the worst in the league in, in terms of the other team running more plays than they do a uh, time of possession in this game have run 42 plays the Colts have run only 28 so lopsided advantage there for the 49ers time of possession it's 21 minutes to 14 minutes favoring the 49ers so they have really reversed those trends look at this dead day tries another onside kick to the other side the scramble who's got it Indianapolis well, when's the last time you saw that in the middle of the game? Back-to-back -back onside kicks. Gary Brackett able to fight his well, way away from the Niners. The answer is, Dick, not very often because it's hard enough to do it once, much less do it twice. Mm. No, who almost got that ball, Dan Deardorff, was Cody Pickett, the backup quarterback. We'll take a timeout. Onside kick unsuccessful, so the Colts inherit a great field position at the Niner 39 yard line. That's Marvin Harrison, far right. He's caught only two short passes in the game. And a full start against the Colts. Full start offense number 78. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Pro Bowler Tariq Glenn guilty again. Yeah, this is really uh, sloppy. And Tony used that word, and this is just, it, it has the look of an offensive football team that just thought that they, by showing up here today that they were going to score 45 points. And it, uh, it hasn't happened. Sixth penalty for Indianapolis. They committed four total in the last two games. There goes the long ball for Harrison. Intercepted in the end zone on the deflection by Bruce Thornton. Flag down in the end zone. Thornton who was on the practice squad a week ago, a second year corner out of Georgia. Part of the desperation with all the injuries, four at that position, and Thornton gets the deflection off Harrison. Well, it, he gets single coverage. And, and Peyton There's Manning no will make play. this effort, but it is a superlative back. effort by Harrison First trying down, to reach seven. that ball. And by reaching for it, he deflects it and stops it just enough that it comes right down into the hands of Bruce Thorne. Tremendous effort by Harrison, but boy does it backfire. Uh, perplexed Peyton Manning. Uh, only two turnovers all year coming in after four games and three turnovers today. Alex Smith and the 49ers go to oh down he goes and how quickly did David Thornton arrive on the scene the linebacker that's how the game started. Well that's just unacceptable pass protection starts from the inside and works its way out. Take a look to the right side. You just don't turn that guy to the inside loose. That's the decision that Quame Harris, the right tackle, made. You start inside. You don't give the guy with the shortest route to the quarterback a free run. But Alex they're going to call a personal foul on Thornton for attacking with a crown of his helmet. That's going to take it out. To the 35 yard line. You can see right there, he lowers the head and hits 
Smith right in the throat with the top of his helmet. It's okay to tackle the ball carrier like that. You just can't hit the quarterback like that. Now they take it to the 28 penalty marked off from the spot of the foul. And a first down for the 49ers. Barlow the running back. Barlow pushes the blocker out of the way. Caroms off two Colts. All the way to the 48 yard line. Well, there's a phrase that Bob Sanders is going to hear all week. It's called wrap up. Bob Sanders, the big hitting safety, number 21. He's going to come in and he's going to, right, watch this. Right? Hey, Bob, you got to grab him with your arms. Mike Doss was down low. We'll look at Dwight Freeney go upfield. Now look at the hustle. Look at the hustle by Dwight Freeney coming all the way around, and he almost gets the ball to come loose. Do you see that, see that big swipe at the ball? <laughs> but Bob Sanders, big hit isn't enough. you got to wrap up and tackle. Frank Gore in for Barlow, runs into his own man. One tackler away from a touchdown, loses the ball, but it's rolled down by contact at the 40-yard line. It'll be an 11-yard gain in the first down, so 21 yards from Barlow, 11 from Gore. And this time, the open field tackle is made by Bob Sanders. And this is just, boy, I love the second and third effort by Gore. There's Sanders right there. Ooh, look at that. He just barely got the left foot of Frank Gore. This kid here, if anybody thinks that they're going to wave at him and he's going down, they've got uh, they've got a big surprise in store. I love the way this guy keeps going. He stays in. That's Otis Amy in motion. And they're going to sweep with Gore. Not much to the 36. Monte Rager. Big tackle out there to make the stop. Now there's a surprising statistic. First downs, which offer you some indication of the flow of the game. 11 for the 49ers, 11 for the Colts. Well, this has been a complete turnaround for San Francisco. Look at the time of possession. Again, they are reversing just about every trend they had shown in the first four games of this season today. They are turning around and you putting them in a positive spin against the Colts. Back to the third round draft pick, Gore. And he's quickly through the hole and then stuffed a yard and a half short of the first down by Thornton and Brackett. Well, it was a big play early in this sequence, wasn't it, from the 20 yard line when Thornton crashed through, had uh, Smith for a big loss on the sack, but using uh, the crown of the helmet was penalized. And that allowed the 49ers to get out of a deep hole. You know, that, that's just instinct because that's the way you're you're taught to tackle. And and again, it's unacceptable. You, you know you're going to get you know you're going to get penalized for doing it against the quarterback. It, it's but boy, I, it's hard to think at full speed like that. Third and two. Fake to Barlow. Smith. Open man is Beasley, and the fullback has a first down. Flag down. Again, the mobility of Alex Smith on display. He throws well on the run, doesn't yeah, he? Well, he's he's had enough experience doing it. That's what he did his years in Utah playing for Urban Meyer. Illegal formation on the offense. Number 67, the tackle was uncovered. There was no one eligible receiver on the end of the line. That's a five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. And that's a mental error. Yup. By either a tight end or a wide receiver to that side of the field. It's not on the tackle. No. Oh, no. He, he's got problems of his own just dealing with Dwight Freeney. But 67 is, a, is an ineligible number, and someone must be on the line of scrimmage to his outside so, so that, that he's not an eligible receiver, which he was on that play, and he didn't report. So that's the penalty. Instead of a first down on the Beasley catch, third and seven, and perhaps out of field goal range and less. Down the middle. Intercepted. Picked off by Cato June again and June out to the 45 yard line as he has a twin picks against young Alex Smith. He had an interception earlier this year for a touchdown one today and now here is his third. And now that's the fourth interception suffered by Alex Smith. Growing pains can hurt. That well, with the onside kick and the interception on the first play of possession. This is the second scrimmage play for the Colts in the third quarter. And we only have 544 left. 
After the Cato June interception, the give, veteran James around the edge and into San Francisco territory to the 48. Yeah, the baptism as a starter, Alex Smith now picked off four times in the game. Second and short, same play. James dances out of bounds with the first down. Tony Parrish, the safety, made the defensive play. Well, when you throw into the middle of the field, you always have to be careful from a, for a linebacker coming from an area where you don't see him. And Cato June only had the move about three yards. But you can see, look at all the way, zeroing in on his guy is Alex Smith. And uh, again, victimized for the fourth time this game. First down Colts at the 43, leading 14 to 3. Manning, one to go long, had to throw it away. It was Harrison on a deep post, but well covered. Well, again, play action by the Colts, and what they're finding this year is that people aren't jumping all over it the way they have in the past. What Peyton tell us yesterday, he said, sometimes I run play action and I look and everybody's just staring at me. In other words, rather than a big upfield commitment, they're still sitting back playing the pass. Back to James on that stretch play of the Colts and well read by the 49ers. Anthony Adams down low and then Derek Smith and Jeff Ulbrich. Ulbrich who had an injured bicep in the first half back in playing in that inside linebacker position. 3-4 defense instituted by Mike Nolan. As Tony Dunchy appreciative of course of any good defensive play that's been his strong side of the ball since uh, coming into the NFL as a player was a quarterback in college at Minnesota. Well, there's that three down lineman scheme here as they're in their version of the nickel. Third and eight. Here comes the blitz. And Manning throws complete to Stokely. But he's knocked out of bounds short of the first down. An amazing throw that Manning would know Stokely was right there because he was on the run in reverse when he threw that and just on target to Stokely. Keith Lewis was the safety man on the blitz. Now this was some job by Peyton Manning of turning this into a completed pass. I didn't see any way that he was going to be able to get a completion out of this. But somehow he got the ball over to Stokely. Now the, with this kind of penetration too long for a field goal. Balls at the 36 yard line. It would only be about a 53 yarder for Vanderjat, but we're at sea level. Not much wind to bother kickers going either way. The fourth down and a short three. Balls at the 36, so that would be about a 53 yarder for Vanderjet. Certainly within his range, I would think. And that Tony Dungy is elected to go for it. Edgerin James stays in the backfield at the side of Manning. They might be trying to get the 49ers to jump. Nope, they're going to run it. Manning steps up and hits Stokely for the first down at the 27. Tough throw, tough catch. And really not bad coverage by Mike Adams. The free safety for the 49ers, he's there. He makes Peyton Manning throw an absolutely perfect ball. Pretty tough to defend that, though. Working out of the slot, we see it a lot to Brandon Stokely. And San Francisco spends a timeout as Manning had hurried his offense up to the line of scrimmage and the Niners weren't set. That'll be their second timeout here in the second half. We have seen robbers, thieves, and purloiners in this game all playing in the secondary with six interceptions. <laughs> First down, the give to James. He has 90 yards. Prior to that carry, that'll get him up to about 95. Should he hit 100 yards rushing in this game, he would be exactly 50% in his career. 43 games that he's rushed for 100 out of 86. The best in history is 49.4 Barry Sanders. So that puts him in that elite category. James, what a compliment to the passing game. Well, the he's, he's, he's a huge reason that the passing game is as successful as it is. 
That play action only means something because of the way the edge runs. Over the middle to Stokely. Hit immediately at the 15, but that's good for the first down. Mike Adams, the tackler. Stokely, who didn't play much last week as they used a lot of double tight end because of the Tennessee defensive alignment, so he's happy to get in and get his catches. And Peyton Manning has this offense running a little quicker now. They're leaving lots of time on the play clock. They're getting up there and running a play in a hurry. James draws a crowd again and a late flag. Two of them fall. Smith, Ulbrich, and Spencer team up on the stop. And speaking of Ulbrich, how about the fact he has a torn bicep muscle? Holding offense number 78. Ten yard penalty. Repeat first down. It's going to be a long flight back to Indianapolis for Tariq Glenn. Two offside, two false starts, and now a holding penalty against this Pro Bowl left tackle. Went to his first one last year. And he's playing in front of a lot of friends and family. Yep. Went to school over in Oakland at Bishop O'Dowd High School. He only played college ball in Berkeley at Cal. Well, first down and 20. Final two minutes of the third quarter, and Manning guns complete. It is Stokely again. Suddenly it is Stokely who seems to be finding all the open creases in that 49er defense. Shy of the first down at the 12-yard line. Well, when you got Reggie Wayne to one side on the outside, Marvin Harrison on the other side of you to the outside, a lot of times the middle of the field belongs to the guy in the slot. And that has been uh, good news for Brandon Stokely ever since he came over to the Colts. Four catches for Stokely, second and two. James belted by Anthony Adams first, and then the second wave of tacklers right at the five-yard line. Dick, I, I just have a lot of admiration for the way the 49ers are competing. These guys, the, a couple touchdown underdogs coming into this game, they there's no rollover in these guys. They are hitting hard. They're contesting every inch. Mike Nolan ought to be proud of the way his football team is expending effort out here on the field today. Well, you have every sense he's going to be a terrific head coach. Yeah, you really do, don't you? Third and about a foot. Give it to James. He's got the first down inside the five. Anthony Adams at tackle made the stop. Played at Penn State. And how about Penn State? Unbeaten the Nittany Lions of Joe Paterno. How about that Minnesota Michigan? That's game? off to thee. <laughs> you old oh, Wolverine, man. you. There's, I had to, uh, of course, I'm a Michigan guy, but uh, only one coach in the National Football League <laughs> went to and played for the University of Minnesota. And that's Tony Dungy, and I had to meet with him yesterday afternoon. Timing. <laughs> yeah, timing's everything. Huh? Final seconds of the third, and they're not going to get the playoff. That's the end of three here in San Francisco with the Colts leading 14 to three. We'll return to City by the Bay after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. We enter the fourth quarter. Dick Enberg, Dan Deardorff, Armin Katayan, Mark Wolf, our producer, Bob Fishman, our director. Crew here at CBS, 14 to three, and the Colts threatening to make it really tough on San Francisco. First and goal inside the five. Harrison wide right. James the running back. Manning restructuring the offensive play. James Burrows and is close. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Oh, what a great surge by the Colts offensive line. Did you see Jeff Saturday, number 63 in there? He kept driving and digging and pushing. It's not very glamorous sometimes. But look at this. Watch this surge on the right side. Right there, James is hit. He keeps driving, but the guys, look at, look at Saturday, keep piling forward. Good work by the right side of that offensive line of the Colts. And James goes over the 100 yard rushing mark with that four yard touchdown plow. Vander Chat adds the extra point, and the Colts, heavily favored in this game, take a 21 to 3 advantage. And here's the kickoff. Rainer. Not too long. He's going to have to kick him longer than that. Stay on just as a kickoff expert. And Maurice Hicks takes it out to the 33-yard line. 
Alex Smith has completed four passes to his own and four to the Colts since the start of the second quarter. Well, there's number one as he unfortunately floated up into the air, intercepted by Jason David. Then Cato June steps in front of it, and he runs it back for a touchdown. And again, on the move, under pressure, Mike Doss makes the interception on the sideline. And then Cato June gets his second pick of the day. Unlike the first one, he didn't get that one back into the end zone. But Alex Smith, as you can see, only 8 of 20. Zero TD and four picks. And that is a measly rating. Now he can identify with the quarterbacks that have played against this Colts defense coming into this game. As uh, the Colts defense takes care of Baltimore, Jacksonville, Cleveland, Tennessee through three quarters. No touchdowns in those games and none again today. Pretty good run. And that last interception by Cato June. We talk about the foot speed of this Colts defense. How quickly he darted in, made the play. I, you know, Dick, I'm still chuckling about halftime of this game, watching Dan Marino and Boomer Esiason. And Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, number 66. Five-yard penalty, still second down. They were talking about Alex Smith and his three interceptions in the first half, and Boomer goes, well, Dan, we've all been there. And Dan goes, well, I don't know about you, but I've never been there. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want any part of that. <laughs> no, you, you just cowed yourself yeah. for that one. Yeah, well, I, well, maybe Boomer, you've been there, but I haven't. <laughs> and they have a lot of fun, don't they? That's Shannon Sharp. Who writes his material? I don't know. We'll get some of those lines. Barlow to the 34 yard line. Brackett and Sanders make the tackle, and Gary Brackett, number 58, out of Rutgers. What an inspiring story he is. A walk on. He uh, played two years, tried to get a scholarship at Rutgers. Finally, in the third year, he was going to go to a Division III school. Uh, Armand Catan uh, can give more on that story. And he finally hangs on with Rutgers, becomes their captain. No one drafts him. And then there's much tragedy in this man's heart. Smith way over the head of Johnny Morton. There's Brackett and Harmon. It has been quite a three, four years for this young guy. Well, it certainly has, Dick, and I think after we have this punt here, we'll pick it up in this next series. But Gary was telling us last night about this family storm that hit that claimed his father, his mother, and his brother, and we'll talk about that after this kick. And all in the very tragic health conditions. Andy Lee, good punt down to Troy Walters. Flag down. Walters to the 28. And a solid hit from Terry Jackson. His dad Willie was the first African American to play football at the University of Florida. Brother Willie played with the New Orleans wide receiver for six years. And look at the bracket as they settle out the penalty. A good time maybe to continue uh, the story, Armin. Well, Dick, you know, we're talking about this family storm. It really hit in the beginning of October of 03 when Gary's father passed away from heart failure. The following February, his mother goes into the hospital for routine surgery. Then all of a sudden, she has a stroke during the after the surgery and has to make the decision Gary does to take her off life support three days later. Then his brother Gregory, a role model in his life, dies at the age of 27 in February of 05 from complications following bone marrow transplant for cancer. Marrow that Gary himself had donated. As Gary told us last night, he says, I say a prayer to them before every game. They are my angels, he says, looking down from the best seats of the house, and they inspire me to get the most out of my life. Dick? Had too many men in the field. That penalty is declined. During the return, we had holding a number 80. That penalty is accepted. 10 yards, spot of the foul, first down, Indianapolis. The final line on that, uh, Armin, was that here's a guy too short to play, not big enough, and he finally makes it on an NFL roster. Now he's the starting middle linebacker, and I like the way he said it. No one's going to steal my jewelry. You can't tell me I can't do it. Ball at the 15-yard line. Colts lead 21-3. 13 minutes left here in the fourth. Edron James 
wrestled down after a couple of yards by Isaac Sopwaga from Hawaii. There's the schedule for Indianapolis next three weeks. St. Louis at home, then at Houston and a bye, and they'll be favored in those next two games. Could well come out of the bye seven and zero. Cincinnati plays tonight. They're four and zero. Jacksonville, their opponent this evening. Washington is trailing. They're the unbeaten team in the NFC East, three and zero, and Tampa Bay lost to the Jets today, so they're unbeaten start ends. Over the middle to Wayne. Tackled immediately. And it's shy of the first down as Derek Smith makes yet another hit. He's leading the 49ers and tackles again this year. He's just a machine. 167 tackles last year. Started his career with the Redskins. Third down, four. There he goes. Manning through the gesticulations, points. You never know quite when he wants the ball. This is the time. A quick out to Wayne, first down at the 34. And Denver Broncos, after a disappointing start, uh, they're doing some serious business. Yeah, we saw them in Miami on opening day, and I think the Heat beat them as much as the Miami Dolphins did. And Boy, ever since then, they have been playing good. For, they've been playing to form. I think everybody expected that uh, this was going to be a big year for Shanahan and the Broncos. And Jake Plummer, I think the third year now in that system of Mike Shanahan's, and uh, uh, that's when everybody expected him to really blossom. That uh, AFC West is contentious with Kansas City, San Diego, Oakland is a very good one and three team. Bye week this week for the Raiders. Gary Collins is uh, having a fine early season. Peyton Manning finds James all alone on the delay over the middle, and he has a first down at the San Francisco 48. Keith Lewis making the tackle. Checking those standings with Denver in the lead. Should they win, would have first place 4-1. and one. Kansas City and San Diego hosts uh, Pittsburgh tomorrow night, and the Raiders as good a 1-3 team as uh, you'll find anywhere. Meanwhile Peyton Manning the beneficiary of outstanding pass protection went through two or three different reads before he found a wide open edger in James. Now the stretch play and James tackled for a loss is Derek Smith. That's a rarity in itself to bring him down that far behind the line of scrimmage. Again give the 49ers credit they are aggressively attacking this Indianapolis offense. That's an inside linebacker in Derek Smith who was four yards upfield. On the stretch play. Four yard deficit, second and 14. Manning move, moving James back behind him, goes under center and gives to James. And a whistle. And they took too long. That'll be a delay of game Prior against Indianapolis. Delay of game offense. Five yard penalty. Their Still tenth second down. penalty. Team that had committed only 17 in four games. Interesting uh, with all the speculation with good starts people immediately uh, fast forward to playoff time and of course Indianapolis at 12 and 4 the last two years but they haven't gotten a bye and Tony Dungy says that that bye is as important as home field advantage. Well it's one less game and he knows the importance of that. He looks off to James and then guns it to Reggie Wayne. And that'll be to the 45 yard line. Gets back about uh, 13 yards. Yeah, at 12 and 4, you'd think, geez, that'd be good enough for a bye. But the years that, you know, the Pittsburgh and New England had last year, 12 and 4, just not good enough. And, you know, it's uh, certainly, you know, they would like, let's not kid ourselves, while they'd love to buy, they'd love to be in that dome all the way through the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And the Super Bowl this year is in a dome as well. Detroit. I, I know the roof moves, but I doubt it'll be open. <laughs> 36. <laughs> and over the middle to Stokely. And that'll be good for the first down at the 36 yard line to the young man who played for his dad, Nelson Stokely, at Louisiana Lafayette. And his uh, thrower in college, Jake DeLome. And Manning saw him one of those uh, academy, the uh, Manning Academy passing academy. And 
He said, you know, someday I hope we get a chance to acquire this guy. He's just what we need. Well, it's been a win-win for both Stokely and the Colts offense. And this is a pretty, pretty nice, very effective drive they're putting together right here. Back to James. He's well over the century mark and adding to his total outside the 35. Peyton Manning told us yesterday, he said, people are going to make a mistake if they think that we will not be patient enough to just sit back and run Edger and James at them. Yeah. He said it's either a quick death or a slow death. And if people are going to force us to do it slowly, well, that's what we'll do. While, you know, when you watch this drive, it appears to be effective. But uh, if you're going to put together long drives, you can't have as many mistakes as the Colts have made today and expect to be successful. First appearance of Rand Carthen, the son of Maurice, the fullback for the Giants and now defensive uh, or offensive coordinator in Cleveland. Brown's winning today. He's in the game with Manning. He fires wide open. Stokely again. And he's into the 22-yard line. Manning uh, uses the entire 53 and a third yard width of the field. Well, you can see a really good percentage throwing over to the left, 9 out of 13. Uh, of course, it gets a little better even in the middle of the field. And I think it's going to tail off here to the right. You can see a heavy uh, percentage of the passes going in the middle and to the left. They've not worked to the right. And interestingly enough, to the right is Marvin Harrison. Harrison with only a couple of short yep. catches today. Ten passes in a row completed by Manning. Gets out of trouble and throws it away. Quarterback and then, uh, was out Bernie Mazzola in the no third row rounding. down below made the catch. Second and ten. Well, that was a sack for sure. Was that Dominique Rhodes who made that block, who came back? Somebody came back and peeled off. Uh, was it Carthen? This is a sack for sure because Peyton Manning is not going to get away from this. Watch how he's hooked. You're right, that's Carthon. Who can, look at that. That's a good piece of hustle. Knocking off Derek yeah. Smith. Yeah, good job finding that, guys. Quick throw, complete to Dallas Clark. Short gain to the 18-yard line. It'll be third and uh, about seven. Smith again, what a game he's had on defense. Well, and again, I'm impressed with the hitting. Did you hear those right there? <laughs> we are clear up here, high above the field. Listen to this, folks. This, is, uh, this has been a really hard-hitting game. On third and six, a long six. Manning throws over the middle to Harrison. He's in the end zone for a touchdown. And history made here at the stick. Check that. I'm sorry, Troy Walters. It wasn't Harrison. But uh, my heart had Harrison. <laughs> but it was Walters at 80, number 86, number not 88, built the same slight. A body and he slips over the middle and kicks his way into the end zone for a touchdown. Well, almost, <laughs> almost Harrison. <laughs> and congratulations to Walters from his teammates. Now, good effort after the catch. Caught that in traffic and then, and then really powered to the end zone. And finally, you know, this is one of those deals where the Colts have a bunch of points on the board, but it has been a frustrating day offensively. Walters. A Harrison like touchdown. 28 to 3, Indianapolis. And I think the ghosts of Steve Young and Jerry Rice got me on that call, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> not in our ballpark. <laughs> well, this game's not over yet. Colts, however, very much in command on their way to a 5 0 start. Rainer. Spins it down to the 10 on the run. Maurice Hicks looks down at the 30. A flag thrown. And, uh, totally out of character if this is on Indianapolis. A lot of yellow, almost as many in this one game as the first four combined. Holding during the return, number 58. 10 yard penalty be, will be enforced from the end of the run, 10 yards. 
we'll take a timeout. 28-3 Indy. Alex Smith in his NFL debut as a starter and hands off on the draw to Barlow. And he picks up seven, eight yards into the arms of Gary Brackett. You know, Peyton Manning yesterday was commenting on his first year and he said thanks to Jim Morris senior he put me in at the start and let me play every game I made a lot of mistakes but I felt myself learning each game and it was here in San Francisco when he threw three touchdown passes to Marvin Harrison he said that was the breakthrough game it was in the middle of October he said uh, for his brother Eli the same thing last year he learned learn learn and now look at the production of the younger brother Eli with the Giants. Well, Peyton Manning, when he came into the league, had more talent surrounding him in India. Illegal Remember, he had Marshall on Falk. the offense. Number 77 was not lined up in the line of scrimmage. That's a five-yard penalty. Still second down. Let's take a break here. Go to New York and Greg. All right, Dick, in Buffalo today, Kelly Holcomb made his first start for the Bills. A terrific one at quarterback. Two touchdown passes, including that one to Eric Mould. Buffalo beat Miami 20-14. to Back to you. All right, Greg, and uh, that Eastern Division's interesting, isn't it? New England three and two, and all the other teams, Miami, Buffalo, and the Jets, all within a half game. Smith unable to run his way out of trouble. Raheem Brock and others to make the stop. Time called, or is it? I, I saw the timeout sign being given by uh, Alex Smith, but they've uh, they're still running the clock. Dwight Freeney couldn't believe that there wasn't a holding call there. He pretty much got tackled by Clement, the left tackle. Kevin Barlow, then the workhorse for San Francisco, 18 carries, 99 yards for Barlow, his uh, best rushing game of the season. Screen to Barlow. Man, like a pinball. And look at him kick free out across the 40. A great effort by Barlow. And a first down San Francisco. 30 to 10 coming up on 12 minutes to play. Oh, that's a shocker. Uh, the Eagles at 3 and 1 along with the Giants with the Redskins starting today 3 and 0. Oh, but uh, we're being beaten by Denver. And Dallas uh, flexing its muscles against the Eagles. You see the standings there coming into uh, today's play. Maybe just uh, barely a bite into the season. A lot of interesting storylines well, already. It is. Uh, it's shaping up to really be something. And again, who I, I couldn't see Dallas putting it to Philadelphia like that. Smith fumbles, recovered oh. by Larry Triplett of the Colts. And again, that is ball security is always number one priority for a quarterback. You can jump, you can do all the different things, but you can't just have the ball dangling in front of you the way it is here with Alex Smith. He's got it tucked away there, but here, now he's going to bring it out. Look at that. He had it down at his waist, away from his body. That is that is just an invitation to a turnover. And Robert Mathis, that lightning quick defensive end, you saw him reach in and stab at it, knock it free, and triple it recover. Alex telling us yesterday some of the things he had to concentrate on. Uh, things like keeping two hands on the ball back in the pocket. Uh, again, those are the types of mistakes. You don't judge a rookie like this on one game. You don't judge him on the next six games. You, you, you won't judge him until next year sometime. As the day off is Jim Sorge. And Sorge uh, from Wisconsin is the quarterback. We can uh, close up the stats on Peyton Manning. Typical day, well over 50%. Uh, uh, one touchdown, but what is a typical are those two interceptions. Oh, his rating coming into this game, 97.4. It finishes today at only an 82 rating. So, uh, yeah, maybe the completion percentage might be closer to typical, but the tail end of that graphic with one touchdown and two picks, that's, that's very atypical. And wide to the right is Troy Walters. As uh, Marvin Harrison joins uh, Manning on the bench for the Colts. Dominique Rhodes, the running back for Edger and James. He's to the 25 yard line. Dick, I would imagine there are 60,000 some folks who have tickets to that game next week against the uh, St. Louis Rams in Indianapolis that are quite pleased that made uh, that may, uh, Peyton Manning and Harrison didn't connect today. They're going to hope it happens in front of them next week. 
Well, that's right. In front of the home crowd where it can be truly celebrated by all as Rhodes inside the 25 gets enough for the first down. Travis Hall makes the stop. The defensive tackle and Marvin Harrison who came up limpy early in the game after making a short catch. He had only two receptions for 17 yards and that is a off day for the productive wide receiver of the Colts. We're at the two minute timeout. Peyton Manning and the Colts can start thinking about next week and their home date with St. Louis and then they go to Houston and in his stead Jim Sorge who followed uh, Brooks Bollinger at Wisconsin as the quarterback at the controls first down at the 23 yard line Dominique Rhodes takes the handoff and short yardage into the thick of the 49er defense and Derek Smith again. Twenty eight to three Indianapolis. And they'll just do a couple of kneel downs and uh, this game will be over a reminder it's a another outstanding night of entertainment on CBS this Sunday night lineup that starts with 60 minutes there's Alex Smith his first start he was the number one draft pick of all those selected in the draft this past year makes his first start for the 49ers a rough one indeed four interceptions and a fumble completed but nine passes but you, know, you learn on the job in this league especially when you're the number one pick and that means your team was had the worst record the year before. Well part of the process for Alex uh, and this is good news is going to involve a bye, and that will give him a lot more time to work on this but then unfortunately he's playing he's going to go up against some of the better defensive teams in this league uh, against the Redskins against Tampa Bay. He is uh, he's going to have to work hard here in the next month of the season to to try to grow and try to not get too down because of games like this. He's extraordinarily bright. He's yeah. got a terrific uh, athletic talent. Uh, the future may not be right away but uh, down the line he should be an outstanding quarterback. On a beautiful day by the Bay. The Indianapolis Colts and Peyton Manning go five and oh. You've been watching the NFL on CBS.